Hey, fellow Mathers, before we get into this episode, we want to share with you how you can get access to free content, professional learning that will keep your students engaged and doing the math that matters. Get ready to go to this link, mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. That's right. Registration is open for the free Math is Figure Outable challenge that's starting May 15th and runs to the 17th at 7 p.m. Central. We're going to have three nights jam-packed with learning and routines that you can take straight to your classroom. In these challenges, we have a great time. We do some math, talk about classroom experiences, give away super cool bonuses and prizes. You won't just walk away with routines that are naturally engaging and encourage your students to think mathematically. You'll also have a chance to win over 6 k worth in prizes, including a few virtual PD sessions for your school. I'll be joined by my wonderful co-host, Kim, and special guest, Jenna Laib. You can register at mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge for a fantastic learning experience. That's mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. Now on to the show. Hey, fellow mathematicians. Welcome to the podcast where math is figure outable. I'm Pam. And I'm Kim. And you found a place where math is not about memorizing and mimicking, waiting to be told or shown what to do. But y'all, it's about making sense of problems, noticing patterns, and reasoning using mathematical relationships. We can mentor students to think and reason like mathematicians. Not only are algorithms not particularly helpful in teaching mathematics, but rotely repeating steps actually keeps students from being the mathematicians they can be. Okay, so if you know Pam at all. You oh. know that she is full of ideas, always the ideas, right? Like there's always a new thing. There's a great idea. Um, so much so that we're like constantly like busy, like trying to, to get things done. And some of our um, journey members or people who've been in a workshop, when they hear her talk about something that we're working on, they will send a little message that says, Hey Kim, uh, is that like a it's coming out in six months thing or like a coming out in two years thing because they know that there's always something going on. So because I'm like, hey, it's it's about to come out. And they're like, I'm, about this time, what does that mean? About? Right, yeah. right, right. Well, we are super excited to announce that we have just launched something brand new and we're very excited about it. So we decided that in this episode, we were going to just spend a little bit of time talking about the new thing. And I'm going to just ask Pam, um, you some questions about uh, our new thing and we'll get to it in just a second, but I'm just going to ask you some questions and if that's okay with you and just yeah, to give absolutely. a little bit of insight about what it is and why we're doing it and a little bit about what's going on so that the listeners will know what's new and current in the world of Pam Harris. And okay. y'all, I'm so excited about it. Yep. I'm so, yep. I'm so excited. I'm brimming, uh, over, overflowing with excitement for this uh, super new, can I announce it? Can I say yes, it? Can I go say? for it. Yep. We have uh, launched a new mini workshop, an yep. online workshop for everyone to take, but it's a mini workshop so it can be bite offable and it will help you address the most, the main important things to get right as a math teacher. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited about it. I'm glad you said that because it is about kind of the main things. And I know I don't know we have a great word for what the things are, but kind of the major <laughs> uh, components are the major things that you have to think about. So that's actually a little bit about what I'm going to ask you about. So first yeah, of let's all, dive into it. Mm -hmm. why is this thing, a mini workshop and not you, you absolutely have some full blown workshops some longer ones. Why a mini workshop? Yeah. So we created deep dive workshops because we realized that I wanted to help teachers really dive deeply into content. And so mm -hmm. my deep dive workshops are very specific. It's a specific kind of content, building powerful multiplication, building powerful division are a couple of examples of where we really dive deep. And so they are longer and we mm -hmm. take the time to really develop those big, big overarching major, um, ways of thinking, ways that mathematicians reason about problems. But we also realized that there are some very important things that we could get the ball rolling, that there are yeah. uh, some things that could help teachers clarify those major uh, points 
where where we're missing in math ed today. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. sort of there's these major things that people are just kind of not quite clear on, and because of that, are missing a mile wide, and we're not getting the results that we want. And so we wanted to give a mini experience so that more people would have an opportunity. It's shorter. It's much shorter. Um, so it's a short burst. Uh, it's less expensive and it will give uh, more people an opportunity to get started in the math is forgettable movement, but not only get started. I don't want it to sound like it's an intro though, it, though it is, but it's also um, a way to focus on the major yep. important things that people are missing uh, so yeah. that we can get those right. Then, then it makes, uh, we're able to dive into those deep content areas uh, even better. Yeah, absolutely. So one of those things, those topics, those ideas mm-hmm. that um, people sometimes miss just a little bit is the idea of why strategies versus algorithms. And that's going to be a portion of this mini workshop. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, we're going to dive into the difference between algorithms, mathematical algorithms, and uh, strategies, sometimes called alternative strategies. Uh, this is a place where it's, it's kind of odd, actually. There are some really good math teacher educators out there that are using the word algorithm wrong. They'll say, oh, you know, student-generated algorithms. And like, no, no, you don't mean that. You Algorithms is a very specific de- definition. And when we muddy the water... Um, and we don't understand the difference between strategies and algorithms, then we don't know when to use which. And we also don't know why strategies are so important and why algorithms are amazing historical achievements, but not really very good teaching tools. And if we don't understand the difference between them, then we don't understand the reason to lead away from algorithms and to dive into strategies. So we're going to parse those out. Another topic that is going to come up in the mini workshop is one that we've actually addressed a little bit um, here on the podcast Mm -hmm. uh, because we both recognize and have noticed that this comes up in teachers' classrooms a lot. And it's the idea of models versus strategies. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be another um, part of the mini workshop as well. Yeah, and I'll give Kathy Fosno um, some credit for really helping me start to think about the difference between strategies and models. And this is a really important distinction for teachers to make, because uh, if we don't, then we have this muddy water out there where we might say, how'd you do it? And a student says, I did a number line Mm -hmm. and uh, a number line is a model. At that case, uh, in that point, we want uh, teachers to be super clear that they need to say, oh, okay, like, what did you do on the number line? Which, Which relationship were you focused on? That's the strategy. Same as as similar to um, other important models out there. And if we're not clear on the difference between models and strategies, then we might, um, and the difference between strategies and algorithms, then we might tend to just teach a model as a new algorithm. Mm -hmm. And that's a place, a miss that we're seeing good teachers that are honestly trying to interpret what's happening in their textbooks and what what they're being told to do by their leaders. They're like, okay, now I guess I'm supposed to teach the steps with this box. All right, you guys learn these new steps or, or they might be misunderstanding the, the purpose of models. And the purpose of models is to make thinking visible. And then some good models, we can then help them become tools for reasoning, not tools for following a bunch of memorized steps, but tools for actually reasoning because it helps us illuminate the relationships. It helps um, make the relationships more clear because they're visible. If you can see my hands right now, my hands are in the air and I'm like making, like I'm showing that we're making the relationships visible. So understanding the difference between really those, those three terms, what's the difference between strategies and algorithms? And then what's the difference between strategies and models really helps teachers clarify, oh, that's why my textbook is asking me to do this. Or my leader is suggesting I do this kind of a thing. Those, that clarity then helps everybody be like, okay, now, now I can move forward uh, clearly. Yeah. It's so good because I think um, sometimes it's real easy to throw out some of these words and expect that everybody is on the same page with what, what they mean yeah, um, and, and use so them interchangeably, but, but it's not true. Right. Um, so another- well, and it's nobody's fault. Just to be clear. It's, no, like, it's nobody's fault. No. It's vocabulary and it's, tr- it's tricky stuff. And, yeah. and, and uh, so many good people looked at kind of what's been coming down the pike with new standards. And they're like, I don't really understand what that, you know, the, the words, uh, if if they weren't clearly elucidated, well, let's be clear. If we don't own real math, 
then looking at Real math is going to be, uh, or looking at words that mean real math, but we might read fake math because of our experience. Yeah, we just need to, to, we need to gain the experience in real math. And then now being more clear, we can actually move forward with the real math, not just attaching fake math uh, to, to some new dressing. Yeah. I'm actually really glad that you mentioned the standards uh, a few seconds ago, because one of the other components of this mini workshop are going to be kind of what are the major strategies for each operation, right? Mm. And so sometimes when people look at the standards and they'll say, and other strategies, mm-hmm. and people are like, which, wh- what, <laughs> which, which ones? And so you're going to touch on that as well. Do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Uh-huh. There's this huge, really cool moment, actually, when people start to learn real math and they realize there are alternative strategies, or or maybe their textbook says, here's a bunch of strategies kids should learn, or, or you know, maybe they're they're in professional learning and they're saying that there's these alternative ways. Maybe they've done a number talk and and they're like, whoa, that, there, there's all these different ways that, that people are solving these problems. It could feel really unwieldy. It mm-hmm. can feel like there's this innumerable, um, un, not clarified. I, I'm sure my hands are kind of swimming in the air because it's like this, this vast universe of all these different relationships. Like how in the world am I ever supposed to teach that? Especially, I think many people have been in a number talk when, you know, the six different people share a strategy and your mind's kind of blowing a little bit and you're thinking, I can't teach that. Like, how do you, yeah. am I supposed to teach the steps for them to be able to do all 18 of what just happened? But what, what my work entails is that I've distilled down the major important relationships that mathematicians use when they actually solve problems. And that if we, there's just really a small set, it's just really this very uh, definable set of major relationships that we need to help students construct in their minds so that then major strategies become natural outcomes. And it's not a ton. It's not uh, innumerable. It, 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 there's not so many that we can't fathom them. There's really just this very small set of major relationships that then translate into major strategies. And once teachers realize that, then it becomes doable. Then I can go, oh, okay, like for this operation, I just need kids to build these four major relationships. And then these four strategies will become natural outcomes. Okay. Like I can do that. All right. And I can wrap my head around it. And all of a sudden real math becomes this thing that we can actually attack and gain success. Yeah. And not just success of right answers, but success of actually mentoring mathematicians. Students are actually thinking and reasoning more sophisticatedly than they were. Yeah. Yeah. So one other question that I have for you about the content of the mini workshop, Um, we also hear a lot of teachers who um, talk about how they're doing number talks uh, or or they call them, uh, we call them problem talks. Um, So you Mm -hmm. spend some time talking in the mini workshop about problem strings versus problem talks and what you recommend as kind of the um, balance, what you should do. Yeah. What you should do and when and how much. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so some really good people have written um, quite extensively about number talks, and I don't want to take away uh, from you know really good stuff, but I think we can get more bang for our buck if we understand the distinction between a problem talk, a one-time shot, one problem, maybe a couple of problems where the goal is different than a problem string or a series of problems where the goal is something else. And I suggest that if we parse out those two goals, that that both goals are good and we need them, but we have somehow misunderstood that we can Mm -hmm. just do problem talks and get both goals accomplished. And I'm going to suggest not so. That if we want both goals accomplished, we need both routines. And there's a good balance that we need between the routines of what we might call a number talk. Well, I call it a problem talk. I call it a problem talk, y'all, because I'm K-12. So I don't just do talks about problems that have numbers in it. I do talks with problems that have graphs and equations and functions and geometry and statistics and all that. Like those are problem talks. We're talking about problems. Um, so don't we don't need to split that hair, but that's why I say problem talk. That there's a difference between just, uh, not just, but between doing a problem talk where I'm going to accomplish some things and a problem string where really the outcome there is to build those major relationships that lead to those major strategies. 
that's where the construction happens. There's some other good things that can happen with problem talks, but we really don't get those major relationships constructed. You might consider that if you are thinking about a number talk or what I'd call problem talk, that I've thrown out a problem and I'm asking kids, how'd you solve it? And I'm putting all those different strategies on the board that often an outcome is that this kid did the, uh, way number one and this kid did way number two and this kid did way number three and this kid did way number four. There's so much happening here because it depends. You have to understand models versus strategies to make sure that you're recognizing, did you have really four different strategies or did you actually have two different strategies on two different models or were they all the same strategy and they were all using different models? Like, like there's a lot of models and strategies to parse out there. But then I need to ask myself, did kid one really construct kid four's strategy in that by seeing one example of it, did that actually help them really develop those relationships? And I'm going to say not most of the time. Sometimes some kids can pick up on that, but how can we get all kids to pick up on that? Mm, problem strings. That's where the series of problems come in and we need to have problem strings, not just problem talk. So there's uh, definitely a section on that in the mini workshop. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, so let me just ask you a question that is probably on the minds of some of the listeners. Mm -hmm. And they might be thinking, hey, I know you just put out this major strategies e-booklet. Yeah. And you've talked about it before and you've shared it before. Um, why can't I just download that and call it good? Yeah, because you're recognizing that the each of the topics that we just talked about that it's going to be in the mini workshop are in the major strategies ebook. Bam. Yeah. So it's a, that's a super question. Well, we've had lots of people download, thousands of people download the Major Strategies ebook and love it. And we are getting fantastic comments back from it. But we're also getting a slew of questions about it because it's a mini ebook. Like it's a, it's a free ebook that we put out and it's, it's all in writing. You're not hearing it live. You're not, here's the most important part. You're not seeing it happen. You're not seeing the models being drawn. You're not seeing the, the order of the numbers in the model and how, what I'm thinking about first. You're not hearing the conversation about the why the kind of parts of what we just talked about here. And then the more in depth that we're going to go in the mini workshop, but in a huge way, it's the illumination of, of the concepts and the ideas and the strategies that are in the ebook now become live. It's, it's in a way, it's a little bit of a comparison between say, pick your favorite ebook that you've read or a, or a hard copy book. You read the words, you do the thing, and then picture that you get the audiobook. And when you hear the audiobook, especially if you've, if you've got a really good reader or maybe the uh, author is reading it, you can hear it in their voice and everything. You just get so much more out of it. But then consider what if that was a full blown movie? Like, what if you're actually seeing it happen and you're able to, you know, it's recorded, it's not live, but you're, you're seeing the, the visual and you're like the, uh, the sounds are, are making the sound and the sight is making it all even pop all that more. That's why the mini workshop. So y'all, if you've, if you've downloaded the free major, major strategies ebook, great, like use it. Let's change the world with it. But if you'd like to have the the film version of it. If you want to have the, um, the really the popped version, the boost that it can give you to, it'll definitely have more the, uh, I'm not, it's not an audio book. I'm not just reading through the ebook. Um, it's a lot of explanation and mostly a lot of visuals, a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, really being able to see what we mean. And again, more detail, more behind the scenes, more explanation, um, all the, all the more, but, but to be clear, all keeping it within a mini workshop so that you can do it in a reasonable, respectable amount of time and, and really gain clarity on those major misses that are happening out there that are just keeping really good teachers from getting the excellent results that they should be getting. Yeah. So um, one other really, really important question for mm -hmm. teachers, for schools, for anyone in the field of education is money. So why did you pick such a low price point for something with such great value? It's uh, yeah. And we're putting a lot of, uh, we've put a lot of effort and thought and, um, time and all the, like, it's a decent experience. You are going to learn a ton, but we wanted it to be affordable. We know that your teachers, we know you have both limited funds and, and also limited time. And so we pack a punch into this short, really powerful experience. We want to have the opportunity for schools to get lots of teachers on board so that there's yeah. 
common knowledge across systems so that we can start having common understanding, common language, common uses of, no of models and, and, and um, the vocabulary we use. So we really wanted to make it affordable so that we can really spread the word that math is figure outable. We really, yep. really make it happen. Yeah. Okay. So Pam, the last um, few questions that I have for you are like a rapid fire. We're talking about mini workshop. Oh, I love rapid so, fire. Okay. Rapid fire. I'm taking right, a deep ready? breath. Here we go. Uh huh. Okay. Favorite mini blizzard flavor. <laughs> mini workshop, mini blizzard. Uh, okay. So blizzard is for those of you out of the country is a, is an oh, ice cream yeah. treat that ice we get around treat. the country. Yeah. Um, I, at the moment I'm a Reese's girl, but, oh. but it, I, I put, I put a chocolate syrup. So it's gotta be chocolate ice cream with Reese's. It's all the chocolate. Okay. Okay. So, chocolate all right. Candy. Ready? All right. Yep. Yep. Mini muffin flavor. Oh, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> To her okay. theme. I'm, All I'm, right. I'm, yeah, there you go. All right. What about a mini candy bar? Ritter Sport. What? What is that? <laughs> yeah, that's a German. It's kind of expensive, but it's super yummy. Okay. Never heard of it before. I mean, uh, yeah, the mini, yeah, they're kind of mini and they're really, yeah, and way too expensive, okay. but super good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ready? Yep. This one's not chocolate. Minnie Mouse <laughs> or Mickey Mouse? Oh, goodness. All right. Since we're in the mini workshop mode, let's just go mini mouse. Why not? Woo! All right, sounds good. Go All right. Okay. You, got, you got the other mini, any other minis in your life? Oh, minis. Uh, I drove a mini Cooper once. Does that count? Oh, Is that a thing? Yeah, sure. um, Absolutely. Let's see. Hey, my son had a Mac mini that ser served him well for many years. That was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years. <laughs> many, many, many. Uh, 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 All right. Uh. All right. Last, last thought. Any last comment about this fantastic mini workshop? Y'all register for this mini workshop at mathisfigureoutable.com slash mini. Hi, did you see that one coming? Mathisfigureoutable.com slash mini is where you can register anytime. It's open all the time. Uh, we call that an evergreen. You can, uh, you can get in and dive into helping you clarify what could be the thing that could be keeping you from being as successful as you deserve. There's just these few major important things that if we clarify, everybody can get more clear and we can have more and more success. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in and teaching more and more real math. To find out more about the Math is Figureoutable movement, visit mathisfigureoutable.com. Let's keep spreading the word that math is figureoutable. Thank you for listening and making math more figureoutable. To learn even more, make sure you register for our free challenge at mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. You are not going to want to miss the evenings of May 15th through 17th, starting at 7 p.m. Central. Math teaching, math teaching, go register now. That's mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. Join us to make math more and more figure outable. And if you can't join live, register and we'll send you access to the recordings. We'll see you there.